Good morning. Happy Thursday to the 11th of April, everyone. Uh, this is Mornings with Michael for information and educational purposes only. It is your responsibility to do your own due diligence to find out what is right for you. So let's go to our screen. Our word of the day is totem. Totem is our word of the day. A natural object or animal that is believed by a particular society to have a spiritual significance that is adopted by it as an emblem. A person or a thing regarded as being symbolic or representative of a particular quality or concept. The totem of the eagle represented loyalty and honesty. And Harriet Tubman is a powerful totem of the Underground Railroad. So there we have it. Totem is our word of the day. And let's move on to see where our heat map is today. Let's just refresh this. And what was down yesterday is up. A producer price indexes came in lower than expected, although they were high. Uh, they came in at 2.1%. They were expected at 2.2%. And yesterday, uh, the CPI came in pretty hot, higher than expected. The uh, increase pricing in insurance, car insurance, health insurance, car repairs were some of the notable items that are increasing in pricing. Uh, so there we have it. Uh, NVIDIA is bouncing. It pulled back to their 50-day moving average, got support from institutional professionals, and Microsoft is holding strong. Apple is actually up today. Google continues um, its powerful move. Um, Amazon is up today. Costco is up. Most of the health insurance is down. Energy is down, uh, financials are mostly down, and Tesla is up slightly, bouncing after its strong pullback yesterday. So that's the story there. We can look a little further at the CPI. Yeah, health insurance is rose 1.2%, 1.2% in hospital prices lifting the 12-month inflation rate to 7.7, .7, the highest since April of 2008. Uh, lagged of the surging wage growth in the sector in 2022 and into 2023. And now wage growth is slowing sharply. Energy prices rose 1.1 with a 1.7 increase in gas prices. So there we have that. Now let us... Share the screen. Bitcoin um, was actually up last night, pulled back, and now um, it's bouncing. And uh, it, I guess it hadn't refreshed. Uh, that was yesterday, it pulled back, and now it's up to 70,000. So that is Bitcoin. And let me just share this other screen. If you're concerned about your money, you've spent a lifetime saving. This is a good place uh, to put it. Right now, they're offering a 30 to 45% bonus on any new monies coming into annuities. And over here, as you can see, they beat index investing by about 5% per year. Uh, index investing bounces with the market. If you don't want a 2008 have reprise where you lose 54% on your hard-earned money that you saved for years and years, this is a good place to preserve it. You do not lose money. It goes up a step, goes up a step, and does not come down. So there you go. That is annuity. Let's go to our screens.
We are looking at square. It's kind of bouncing back and forth, up slightly today. Um, so we'll just take a quick look at the other payment stocks. Toast is bouncing today up. Almost 5%. Wow, that's a pretty nice move. Fiserv has Clover. And they're pulling back. We do have a phone call here. We'll just pause the show for a moment. So we are back. Interesting little phone call. And we're working on our home out, rental home. And some people are going to help us with uh, some window treatment. So there we go. We got four. Shift four payments. Bouncing a little bit. As we talked about, we have a 70, 75 uh, option, call option spread on, uh, I believe it's for June or July. But before we move on, let's take a look at our dollar today. Dollar is continuing stronger today with the strong PPI. Silver I couldn't remember if I put on the recording again I wanted to make sure but uh, silver amazing the dollar strong it is actually going up today bouncing off of yesterday so it's up 1.26% See if gold is doing the same. Gold is doing the same, up 1.19%. So commodities are continuing to be strong. A pullback on our arrow copper trade um, to its 10-day moving average and bouncing. Pullback of 2%. The strongest in the sector is southern copper. It's pretty flat. Tech, um, slight pullback. Looks like they're getting close to a breakout here. Uh, spot on tech to buy, I believe. Could have bought a, when it moved above the 200-day moving average. If you didn't do it there, this would have been a nice place right here as it broke through. If Freeport McMoran. A slight pullback, but it's in the profit zone. See if it uh, resets up. Vale, which is really having trouble. Continued negative here. Rio. 0.4, down 0.48%. It is above the 200-day moving average. It has filled the gap. There's one other gap that has a slight opening here. See if it pulls back to that area. 80% of gaps fill and then continue to the trend. So looks like we did fill this gap and this gap here on BHP. Ethereum. Still in a pretty tight area. Looks like it filled the gap. Um, pretty flat for the day. At least uh, Bitcoin earlier had bounced. So it has filled the gap and now it returns to strength as we get close to the halving event where people, excuse me, get paid half of what they got before for producing Bitcoin. So they think uh, there's going to be fewer players. So uh, when people want more of something, when there's less available, 
prices generally escalate. So that's the theory. So we'll we'll see. Some people have been predicting price Bitcoin going from seventy to one hundred and eighty thousand, but we'll just have to see what the market decides. There have been some whales who have been selling. As you can see, when it got up here, got some institutional buying, but it had a pullback. And uh, I think this is kind of like a cup pattern. I was kind of just riding along. It's two, 20 day or not, yeah, 20 day moving average. So it's right above its 10 day. In some ways, it has gotten uh, less extreme. As you can see, when it got up here, when institutional managers were buying with these ants, it was pretty far extended from the 50 day. And now it's allowed the 50 day to catch up, which is healthy. So let's go to the bond yields. They tried to move higher, sold off a little bit, and, and they're right about where they were yesterday. As long as they don't go too much higher, it's better for the market. Uh, the 20 year actually moved up slightly, up 0.86% to 3.64% interest. Take a look at the volatility index. Wow, it really um, broke through, hit our targets for, for the week, and then some. Went up to 761. And remember, we do have this gap right down in this area. And gaps uh, will fill eventually, as this is an oscillating index. You can see this gap eventually filled over here. We have this gap on higher, which actually filled up over here. So that's kind of the story with the VIX. VIX is inversely related to the S&P 500. And the S&P sold off at the beginning where the VIX went higher and now it is bouncing. It's at 0.7%. The equal weight, taking out the seven, six or seven high tech, high um, multiple stocks. Uh, it is bouncing off of its 50 day moving average. We flat uh, from yesterday. The NASDAQ is bouncing off its 50 day up 1.26%. And the equal weight taking off the big cap tech, it has filled the gap and is trying to get back to its 50 day moving average at 0.8%. Uh, we got our small caps, sold off in the morning and bounced off of the 200 number. Trying to, right now it's right at the 50 day moving average, up 0.75%. And our Dow Jones, is up slightly pretty flat for the day and take a look at our mid caps mid cap uh, is up 0.24 percent so this is probably a healthier index than the russell 2000 this is why we're starting to look at this one so that is the story there let's see what the news is for the day So China's headline CPI rose by a barely there 0.1% from a year ago in March. Uh, the bull bear spread in American Association of Individual Investors, AAII, weekly survey was at 19.4 versus 25.1 last week. Bulls fall to 43.4 from 47.3. Neutrals rise to 32.5 from 30.5, and bears rise to 24% from 22.5. On to our consumer news, Nike upgraded to buy at Bank of America and raised target to 113 from 110. It's moving up 3.39%. Costco, as we saw in the 
heat map s p 500 heat map march total comp sales up 7.7 and march u.s comp sales excluding gas rises 7.4 raises quarterly dividend to a dollar 16 from a dollar two march e-commerce comp sales rose 28.3 percent and total March sales 23.4. And Costco is up slightly today, up 1.31%, getting above its 50-day moving average. Rent the runway, quarter four EPS loss of $7.02 versus estimate of $6.53. Revenue is $75.8 million versus $74.2. Uh, forecast full year 24 revenue growth between one and six percent and amazingly it is gapping up and it's above its 200 day moving average it is up 138 percent get out of here wow that is an amazing move So that was Rent the Runway. On to Energy Industrials and Materials, C.H. Robinson, upgraded to peer perform from underperform at Wolf Research, up slightly a half of percent. Chevron upgraded to outperform from sector perform and Scotiabank is pulling back a little bit, down 0.76%. Range Resources downgraded to sector perform from outperform at Scotiabank, and they are down 1.46%. Southwestern Energy downgraded to sector perform from outperform at Scotiabank. And finally, EQT Corporation upgraded to outperform from sector perform at Scotiabank. So Scotiabank is in the news. Uh, so they pull back to their 10 day moving average on to healthcare. Rally Bio announces collaboration of advanced therapeutic solutions for pregnant individuals at risk of fetal and neonatal alloimmune thrombocytopenia, said to receive funding for FNAIT awareness initiative and equity investment from Johnson & Johnson has received equity investment of 6.6 .6 million. Wow, up 74%. Couple of big movers today. Johnson & Johnson. Um, want to thank Johnson & Johnson for buying Shockwave. That had uh, has now produced the greatest, one of the greatest option returns in my life 14,000 percent increase i bought the 270 and it's gone now to 328 i put on um 320 short on it uh, call option so like a covered call to generate some a little bit more income but that was an amazing move on to Vertex enters into an agreement to acquire Alpine Immune Sciences for $65 per share in a deal valued at approximately $4.9 billion in cash, focusing on Povot Accept. That is too tough a word for me to pronounce, but they're buying them. Let's see what Alpine Immune has been doing. They were going up, up, and up, and they skyrocketed today. Huge gap up, up about 37%. Look at this move from 16, 26 to 64. That is quite a move. So that is Vertex. Cero Therapeutics files to sell 26.62 million shares of common stock. And they are just 
declining. It is a penny stock now. What Moderna? Looks like a flat base to me or a box pattern. This is kind of the box. Let's see where it'll let me draw here. We talked about before, this is where Nicholas Darvis was able to create $2 million using the box formation in the 1950s as a dancer. And um, this is a box. It just kind of cycles in the box till it breaks out. So we'll keep our eyes on Moderna. Has my screen went all dark. I guess the battery. It's no fun. Here we go. I believe I got it back. My battery on my phone is getting a little low. Let me pause so I can bring this back up. So we are back. Got our phone plugged in. We move on to Roche. Said so the FDA granted an Alexis blood test, a breakthrough device designation, and they're gapping up up 1.37% on the news, onto technology, media, and telecom. Meta, Instagram will test features that blur messages containing nudity to safeguard teens and prevent potential scammers from reaching them as it tries to allay concerns over harmful content on its apps. And it is now above 520 today. Remember, there's an analyst who has projected Meta to go to 585. Amazon. Said um, web service is the world's largest cloud provider. Owes tech company Covey $525 million for violating its patent rights data storage technologies and Illinois federal jury said. So we'll see how that goes. And it's interesting that Amazon is actually up on this news, up 1.62%. Apple, which we saw in the heat map was trending higher, has warned its users in India and 91 out of their countries. They were possible victims of a mercenary spyware attack dropping the world the word state sponsored it used in previous alerts to refer to such malware attacks and finally investment firms led by former ceo of the spac that merged with donald trump's company djt alleged that their files were hacked and stolen by a current member of the media company board of directors. So that um, issue has declined ever since they came out with a big loss. We tried to move up here, pull back. So that their loss was 0.07% compared to a 7% profit previously so that is our news for the day let's go and take a look at what is moving it's up three percent of course alpine immune sciences which we covered in the news 
in KKR. I think Kohlberg Kravis. Investment management is up three and a quarter percent. Bounce off its 20 day moving average. Get some pretty good volume, uh, although the selling, I guess maybe on the CPI yesterday, pulled back to its 20 day moving average, actually the 50 day, and then bounced to its 20 day. What is moving up? 5%, 100% increase in volume. Of course, we've got Alpine again. Anapsis Bio. Wow, the, quite a gap up, up nearly 12%. We have 15 items. We're not going to look at all 15, but we have Blackbaud. Moving up sharply. Huge volume. Yeah, I would think this is a breakout from here. Had a big sell-off. Provides fundraising, finance management, software applications for nonprofits. Cartesian Therapeutics. Develops therapies designed to modulate the immune system to treat rare and serious diseases. Up nearly 10%. Chewy. Yes, if you have a dog, you might be using their services. Chewy is gapping up today. Yeah, we had some pretty good volume along the way. Um, so it's moving on up, up a little over 5%. Edgeo provides edge-enabled software solutions. We'll have to look at the ETFs. There's a few software moving up. Up a 33%. Earnings are for 14 days. So that is an, a pretty, pretty amazing move. Enliven Therapeutics. Gapping up. Up nearly 23%. Develops and commercializes small molecule kinase inhibitors to treat cancer patients. Uh, and what do we got here? We got Fiverr, Israel-based company, enables people to buy and sell digital services. Uh, gaps up, up 7%, pretty huge volume. I'm not sure if I'll say this right. Gyre Therapeutics develops therapies using hydronodone to create an alcohol Stay uh, though hepatitis snatch in US is up 20%. We've got some definite movers today. And I see Zoom continues its run. That is just incredible. It has gone from $9.31 to $40 in a short amount of time. Let's just scan through. See who some of the other movers are. Media Alpha, Rent the Runway, we saw in the news. Stepstone, I think they're IPO in 2020, and Vera Therapeutics. Take a look at Stepstone. We've got a gap up, up 5.63% and some pretty good volume. Moved into the buy area and then pulled back. So that is that. What is up 10% and 200% increase in volume. We've got Alpine and one of the issues we didn't look at in the previous category. Janix, proprietary tumor activated T cell engager to treat patients suffering from cancer. We got a nice little cup pattern. Pretty good volume coming into the last three days. It's up 14%. So there we go. Let's see if I can bring up my account here. Seems to be 
locked for the moment. In the meantime, I'll pull it up on my phone and just see, go through a few of the items and see where they're performing. But before we do that, let's look at the Fang. We looked at Meta. Now, of course, our software is frozen. We looked at Amazon. Take a look at Microsoft. I think it's the star of the day. It is bouncing off um, the 10 day moving average up 1%. Google is bouncing as well. You had your chance yesterday on the pullback. Netflix is bouncing as well, up uh, 628. Tesla is pulling back. Actually, it's bouncing now. It's up 1.5%. Take a look at Eli Lilly. Bouncing off the 50-day moving average. And we looked at Apple before. See if our account has come back up. It has not. So we'll just take a look here. Take a look at ARM first. ARM, we had a short position. We have a put, put spread. Uh, we shorted the 130. And we um, went long the 124. So that is slightly in the money right now. So we'll see if this continues to bounce. And then we had... The 140, 145 call spread. So that's what we have in ARM, in Square. We have the 84, I believe 86 call spread. Let's we'll see if that can move up here. It's kind of been in a box formation, just bouncing back and forth. Four. We have the 70-75. Kind of sold off, bounced from there, pulled back to the 200-day, bounced again, and it got close to the 200-day again. So we'll see if we can get some buying activity in that one. RTX, we took our profits on the, I believe it was the 94, 99 spread. We took profits on half of them, rolled the rest to a 100, 105. So we have five call spreads there. The trade disc, we put this on a couple of days ago. We did the 87 and a half 92 spread. It is now above 87 and a half. It's slightly in the money. And 
I think it's about $80 profit so far. Uh, next, we have Bros. Dutch Brothers Coffee continue to grow their empire across the country. We put on the 3540 spread when it was down a little lower. So it is profitable, amazing. Um, up 30. I think it's up, uh, yeah, almost $37 in the money at the moment. So we'll see if that can get back and break out of the blue zone again. GLSI. This is a company that we profiled over a year ago when it was right around eight. Uh, right here. It had sold off. So we kind of ignored it and then we checked back on it and we should have put on an alert. So we bought it around 15, went up 20, pulled back, went up to 24, pulled back. Has a target, I believe, of 38 for the year. This is in biotech, develops breast cancer immunotherapies at preventing the reoccurrence of breast cancer following surgery. The CEO and CFO had been buying up a lot of shares and they signed an agreement with uh, some European countries to provide some of their inventions. So um, on the IPO front, this one is starting to break out. It's in the money. What do we have on here? We have the 7580. It is in the money right now. Um, it's up $336 since we put it on. We've been talking about this for a couple of days. So that is, um, we'll just see if it can do the IPO breakout. We may have to roll if it goes past here. So we'll continue to watch that. Yuko is pulling back. We looked at Shockwave when we were talking about the news. App continues to be strong. We bought App with a $45 call option. We sold the 100 shares that we had and then we rolled the option over here. And it continues to perform well. This continues. This seems like an ascending base right now. Had a little bit of a pullback and then it just ascends higher. We'll see if it gets to 80. I believe. Let me just see how it's been performing. 167% profit so far on app NVIDIA. We bought a few here and then bought here right as soon as the earnings came out. It's been rolling up pretty well. I believe this is yeah 20% profit right now. Cellulose. Um, it's pulling back a little bit. Wouldn't mind if it just stays in this area for the next two weeks so I don't lose my shares. But um, we have a covered call option on the cell cellulose. We bought some at 57 and the other at 67 as we rolled our calls up. A portion of our calls from to 62 and then to 67. Micro strategy. Just kind of hanging in there. If we had more capital, we would have bought some more shares, but we bought some options. We rolled those options yesterday, and now we have the
for some reason we did a reverse spread here. It seems to be working out. Um, we did the, we shorted the 1610 and we went long the 1615. So that's in the money about $200. We may uh, take that off. We'll just continue to watch this and see how that works. And then we have 100 shares of MicroStrategy. Meta, we profiled earlier ELF. So I'll have 600 shares of ELF Beauty. We rolled it 220 covered calls down to 85. And then we put on the 70, 170s, 175 call spread for May. We'll just see if that turns profitable so far. Um, Elf Beauty is up marginally today. And then finally, Kava. Had a long discussion about Kava. Sold off big time, pulled back to close to its 50-day moving average and had a huge buy-in yesterday. Look at that volume in a down market day. That's just incredible. And it is continuing to bounce. So we do have... a seven covered calls out of our 1500 shares of kava and um, we think for the long term this is going to be a great issue so that is where we're currently trading let's take a look at our etfs as we explore deeper into the s p 500 financials bouncing off of their 50-day moving average, big pullback here. Energy prices are down today. But this is bouncing off of the 10-day. Pretty amazing. Look at oil pricing. Holding steady at the 10-day. That's down one and a quarter. And UCO is down a little bit more, as you would expect, uh, bouncing off uh, the 10-day communication. This is where Google and Meta are. It's bouncing off of the 10-day moving average. Utilities. Bouncing off the 20-day, up 0.19%. I would think real estate would still be having trouble, but it is bouncing off the 200-day, up 0.64%. Software, getting a little bit of a lift there, up 0.67%. Technology, uh, getting a little bit of a bounce, up 1.65%. Infrastructure, Um, still under its 20-day moving average up 0.31%. Semiconductors getting a little bit of a bounce off their 20-day. Take a little closer look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA, see it pulled back, got close to its 50-day moving average, didn't really touch it, and the next day bounced. So this was your opportunity to buy when it sold off and got institutional support here and then bounced the following day and it is continuing on today up another 3%. Jets, get a little bit of a bounce today. Out of the office, leisure activities, gapping up today. Amazing. This is uh, one issue. Uh, pulled in another family account. Airbnb getting a big bounce as it got close to its 50-day moving average. Not much volume here, but it's got a huge move here. And home builders up slightly. 
metals and mining, which we looked at a little earlier, uh, bouncing. Look at a couple of the steel issues, bouncing off the 20 day. This is bouncing up 0 0.7. Take a look at commercial metals. That's uh, actually pulling back to the 20 day. So, and our building materials had a little bit of a bounce here. Home Depot is in a definite downtrend. Well, let's take a little deeper dive. You know, those two are down. What is moving on up? These are companies. So let's see if we can take a look here. So it has a, a range of companies that you wouldn't think really would have anything to do with building materials. So we'll have to de dig deeper in a, another episode on this, but that is kind of a look at where we are today. This has been Mornings with Michael for information and educational purposes only. Uh, it is your responsibility to do your own dil due diligence. So go out there, make a difference, Keep working on your goals and your activities, and we'll be here to support you if you need any support on your financial activities. Have a great day, and we look forward to seeing you over the weekend.